Father, what is the connection between Freemasonry and modernism? Did Freemasonry spawn modernism? And is Francis a Freemasonic dream come true? Uh, well, if, if Freemasons have dreams instead of nightmares, I guess uh, he would be a fulfillment. I would say yes. I mean, you look back at the permanent instruction of the Alta Vendita, the document that was discovered in the Masonic lodges of northern Italy back in the early 1800s, a document which outlined a plan by the Freemasons of Italy to infiltrate the church and eventually control the election of a pope and to secure, quote, a pope according to their needs, okay? A man who would think like a Freemason, who would speak like a Freemason, and yet he, he would be a revolutionary against the faith, against the church, against God, that Catholics would follow, would follow that, that Pope, who was the, you might say, the creature of the Freemasons, right? The creature, he was created by the Freemasons for that role. As Nubius, the nom de guerre, the man who, who signed the document, said then the Catholics would follow him and even give their lives for him in, in pursuing the world revolution of the Masons, all in the name of the Catholic Church. So yes, the Masons did dream about Pope Francis, and, and now they applaud him roundly. They make no, mis no secret of the fact that they love Francis, they applaud him, they approve of what he does. You know, in that document, the permanent instruction of the Alta Vendita, Nubius, the head of the Freemasons in Italy at that time, even gave examples of those he considered to be, shall we say, unworthy popes, such as Alexander VI, Borgia, but he says that Borgia would not be the man the Masons need to be their Freemasonic Pope. He said, uh, despite all of his personal faults, Alexander VI never betrayed the church. He never justified his own sins. He never pronounced as being moral things that were immoral. So he didn't adulterate the faith in any way. And he defended the Catholic faith and the Catholic Church in every way. And so uh, Nubius says that Borgia was not the Pope they needed for all of his, for all of his faults and failures. Uh, who would be a Pope that they would need? Well, actually, Nubius named somebody. He actually named a Pope who would be exactly what they needed. He said the Pope that they dreamed of, the Pope that they would work for, the Pope that they would hope for and, and labor for night and day to achieve would be a Clement XIV. His family name was Ganganelli. Ganganelli, uh, according to, to Nubius, the Masonic leader, would be exactly the Pope that they would need again because they controlled him. He said they could control him by, by flattery. They could control him by threats that would uh, awaken fear in him. They said that they actually did. Uh, so... Anubius was not just, uh, shall we fantas say, fantasizing. He said they actually had a pope, uh, actually, who was someone whom they could control. And this time, though, he said they would need a pope who would so think like them that they, they kind of wouldn't even need to flatter him or, or strike fear into his heart because he would think like one of them they would form him for this role. That's even more horrific, you know. That's what they dreamed of. So in a sense that, yeah, uh, I think you can say that this was a fulfill. Masonry dreamed of modernism. Freemasons dreamed of installing a modernist pope because modernism contains the principles of Freemasonry. It allows for the vocabulary of, of, of Catholicism. Talk about sacraments, talk about immaculate conception, uh, talk about grace. You can talk about all those things. But the, the ideas are all corrupted by the, the fundamental concept of what faith itself is. And in modernism, it is the antithesis of what faith means in Catholicism. Modernists have completely adulterated and perverted the very meaning of the word faith.
itself. Modernists speak of faith as Freemasons. You, you, I think you can say that the modernist concept of faith is the Freemasonic concept of faith. And that's where it all goes off the rails. Everything goes off the rails with it. That's why a, you know, a modernist pope and a Freemasonic pope would be one and the same. That's why the Freemasons would applaud a modernist pope, because they would think like a, a died in the wool Freemason and pursue the policies, uh, revolutionary policies of a Freemason. You study the concept of, moder of, of Freemasonic faith because it is a religion, and you see how it fits perfectly the, the, the notion of modernist faith as St. Pius X explains it in his encyclical Pascendi, condemning the errors of the modernists. And again, St. Pius X says, the modernist errors all go back to their redefinition of what faith is, that arises from their false philosophies. And once you have redefined the very essence of what faith is, as he says, laying the axe to the very root of the faith, then everything falls with it. The entire tree comes crashing to the ground. Right? So I, I think the, asking the question, somebody's on the right track there and realizing that, yes, actually, modernism is really the fulfillment of the Freemasonic dream to gain control of the papacy by having someone recognized by Catholics as the vicar of Christ on earth, as the, the supreme pontiff, as the head of the church on earth, and yet he doesn't have the Catholic faith. He has the faith of Freemason. He's a modernist.